Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at round 3 that I played in the Oregon Open. So if you remember last game, I played a 1700 and it was a pretty bad game. I almost lost, but I did. I was able to cheese out a draw here. So in this game, I played another 1700, although his, his actual rating at this point was actually 1846. I did not know this at the time, but anyways, let's just jump right into the game. We get e4, c6, this is the Karo Khan defense. D4, D5, Knight C3, takes and takes. The opponent plays Bishop F5, and I play this Bishop C4 line where I play Knight E2 and Knight to F4 to try to trade off this Bishop and get the two Bishops early on. So after Bishop G6, I take C3, and now usually I play, usually what I do here is I play Bishop to E3 and then Castle. Here I decide to play Bishop D2 because sometimes. We get this move knight to d5 attacking the bishop, which can be kind of annoying. So I play bishop d2 instead. We get c5 now. And already, it's kind of, I kind of already messed up the opening. And I don't really know how this keeps happening. But maybe my openings are just bad. But now, after bishop c2 and c5, already black's getting a little, a little bit of counterplay over here. Because black's just threatening to trade and takes on c4. So here I'm already having to spend a lot of time thinking what is really going on. And what doesn't help is that somewhere around at this point, there was this random guy who somehow got into the hotel, grabbed two water cups, and just ran to the playing hall and threw the water cups on the roof. So there's, now there's water dripping everywhere, he runs outside, and we do eventually detain him and get him off the premises. However, this was just really funny for everyone. We all shared a laugh, and then um, the games eventually did resume. The hotel people had to come in and get a ladder and wipe the water off the roof. It was very, very funny. Um, most Some laughed, some cried, most were silent or something like that. But the games eventually did resume, and I ended, ended up taking the pawn. Bishop takes c5. Castles. Wait. Yeah, I, I did I did end up castling. And then castles. So the reason I spent so much time is because I was calculating this move bishop takes f2 and seeing if this was any good or not. Now if I just take with the queen, my opponent takes my bishop and black's just have a pawn for no reason. So I was looking at bishop takes e6. However, at this point I s and the idea is after takes I can take on I mean uh, take on f7 and then I can just take and take. I'm trying to work at work after castles. Now I can take this pawn f7, and after queen takes g3, I didn't really see. I saw basically up to this point, I saw that I had this pawn against two, the double pawns. I have three on two over here. Probably pretty good. However, uh, after a bit more calculation, I saw that black has this really nasty move knight to e5. And I thought this was just going to be really bad, because if I take this bishop, there's knight to d3, fork in the king and the queen, and then also fork in the two rooks, but that's not important because I just simply lose the queen. So I saw that knight e5 is very annoying, and I didn't really see a response to this, so I rejected this idea. However, I missed this move bishop f4, and it's very, very, very dank, very weird, a lot of pieces hanging. Very, very risky to go for this, because if I'm wrong, I just lose a piece. Now maybe I shouldn't be so scared and just go for these lines, but I am playing a lower rated player, I don't want to take that many risks. So I don't I don't don't end up going for this. And the reason Bishop F4 works is after takes, I can take, and then I'm threatening this knight after this, so I can take and take. And now I guess my pawn structure is slightly better, which is why I have a slight edge here, and also black can't really castle queen side. Um I didn't I did not end up going for this. I'm not even sure that my opponent would have played knight e5, but uh, we just go the game goes on. We get castles king side, which is there's just the which is just a normal good move. The knight e4 trying to trade, and now I sacrifice this pawn on f2 to try to get an attack. However, this is just dumb. It doesn't work. So what I should have done here is just play normal consolidating moves. I kind of a, have a hanging bishop here, which I would like to sort out. Let's just play bishop f4, and and then pl just drop back to bishop somewhere. And then just like play king b1, just simple moves. Black doesn't really have that many ideas here. The pawn attack is kind of slow. But I kind of get too too aggressive too early on. And I just sacrifice a pawn for not. And I thought I would have an attack here because of this pawn, weird pawn structure. 
It's actually quite a good pawn structure for protecting because the pawn blocks this diagonal. This pawn can just take on h5 at any point. And also, this bishop can go to g3, which is a fantastic move by my opponent. Very good piece placement because it blocks this g-pawn, and with just an h-pawn, I can't do much. And also, my piece placement here is also very, very poor, because with the bishop here, it's always hanging, it's going to be annoying, and with this queen and rook, there's always going to be force. So bishop g5, knight h5, another good move. Now there's bishop g f4 check ideas, which is going to trade off some pieces, very annoying. So I have to take, because if I don't take, then we get to trade, and then fork. That's no good. So I have to trade. Queen e4, knight h5. I'm just down a pawn here, so already I'm in I'm in trouble again. Now I didn't know that my opponent was actually an 1800. I thought it was just a 1700 being really good, and it's not. This is also a really good play for an 1800 even. So I'm in trouble again. Not really happy with my position. Play rook e1. My opponent just consolidates up a pawn. Open file. Now my opponent stacks here, and now my opponent plays a fantastic move that shows a lot of great understanding. My opponent plays rook to d2. Now my, I'm, assuming my, I'm assuming my opponent played this because he realized that even though I get two pieces for the queen, my king is very exposed and my pawns are about to fall. So when you're evaluating whether to, two rooks are better than a queen, one of the biggest things to look at is king safety. And that's because the, with these heavy pieces, a big part of how good they are is how well they're able to it's for the rooks, it's how well they can coordinate, and for the queen, how easily it can harass the king with checks. And my rooks here look like they're on the same stack, but they're kind of staring into a horse right now. That sounds kind of weird. But they're staring into a horse, they can't, they're not really doing much, and after the queen comes into h2 and takes the pawn g2, I play king c1 to get the king safer. These rooks cannot really coordinate, and they're kind of trapped, they're kind of stuck. None of them can move to the file without the other one dropping. So this queen is way better than this rook, and this bishop was also staring into a wall, which doesn't help. So I have a pretty bad position here. Also, this pawn's about to fall. If my opponent just pushes this pawn, I am going to just lose the game. So I play a3, trying to get my king to safety, and I don't really have many ideas here. I can't really... If I just push the pawn, that does really nothing. My opponent just takes it. No really obvious squares with the bishop. And also, with a knight versus bishop situation, if the bishop doesn't have clear targets or clear squares to go to, the knight is usually better, especially in low time situations, which is, I think, what we're at right now. I don't really know what the deal is with time pressure against 1700s, but hopefully it doesn't become a habit. Now we get, so we get b5, a5, and after bishop d3, my opponent kind of helps me out by playing b4, and the reason this is really, really good for me is because it gives me some counterplay. My opponent should never even do this. My opponent doesn't even have to push any of these pawns. It's all unnecessary. Like, I'm not going to be able to push these pawns here. What my opponent needs to do here is just take this pawn and then start pushing this pawn. No need to give me any counterplay, because once my opponent sacrifices this pawn, yeah, it does weaken with my king a little, but when I just tuck my king away on b1, this diagonal is covered, this file is covered, my king isn't actually that opened up. And I have this past pawn, which is going to give me some counterplay. So queen h2, b5, and here I would like to play this move bishop e2 and rook b3 to get behind the pawn. However, at this point, or no, I'd, I'd like to play bishop c2 to guard the rook on b3 and push the pawn. But at this point, it does not work because of this queen to g5 check. So I have to play king b1 first. However, now my opponent does a lot of good moves with the queen. Plays queen d4, very nice move, centralizing the queen. So it's bishop c2, and now queen c4, another very annoying move because I cannot play rook b3 due to my rook hanging. So I play bishop d2, queen d5, bishop b2, and now my opponent plays a huge blunder with knight to e4. The reason this is so bad is, we'll look at that later, but my, what I think my opponent was looking at is just, oh, there's a fork here. I, well, I can't escape. If I take this pawn, it's just a fork. However, my opponent missed that I could play rook to d1, attacking the queen, and that d2 does not work because I simply play king c2 and the knight is pinned to the queen. Now, if my opponent moves the queen, I just take the knight. If my opponent takes my rook, I take the queen first, and then take the knight, I'm going to promote the pawn. So my opponent can't do that. Well, if my opponent can't do that, what is the point of this? Well, it just loses. And at this point, my opponent also has, like, 40 seconds. So you've got to find a place for your queen to go in 40 seconds. Kind of difficult. Queen e5 loses the game instantly. Rook d8 check. And black just gets ice-skatered 
on two fouls at once. Very brutal. Has to walk the queen. And my opponent plays on for about like nine more moves, which I don't really mind because it gives me time to relax. But I do end up winning the game, and uh, what could Black have done here? Well, queen a8 doesn't work because rook d3 also threatens rook d8. If the king tries to run away, I just go here first, and then I'm still threatening knight rook to h1. So my opponent has to like, I don't know, check first and then move the queen here to guard this. But I would just win this game because I have this passed pawn here. So, another, the other move is queen g5, but I just I can play rook a3 to threaten the same double uh, double back rank. And instead of knight e4, if my opponent just plays regular moves like queen d2 and starts pushing the pawn, my opponent still has really good chances here. So, unfortunately for him, uh, he, my opponent did fall apart in time pressure with this queen e5 blunder, and this is very relieving for me because I don't get another... Although I played another bad game against a lower raid player, I did end up winning the game, which sets me up for a very high raid, a much higher rated opponent in the next game, which is going to be in the next video. So I'll see you guys in that video. Uh, bye, everyone.